The Swiss Alps, scenic, serene, and the perfect place for some high octane research. This is the team behind Project Nicolier, a student made reusable rocket, which they hope will one day make the aerospace industry more sustainable Slowly move back. and cheaper. Okay, so. Wind meter says zero meters a second. Do you concur? Very good. These are our recovery people which are finishing up parachute section. Meanwhile, our avionics people are starting up the flight computer and doing final checks on that. Today, in this remote valley, Hannes Schatzman and his team are preparing to test their rocket. Not for a launch, but for a drop. What we're going to do is we're going to get a helicopter and lift our system up around a thousand meters above ground. Then we're going to drop it and then hopefully it's going to steer itself nicely onto our landing point. It's all to test the rocket's recovery system. Many commercial rockets have to reignite their engines to safely land after a launch, but this team's unique approach uses an algorithm that steers a parachute. So the special thing about uh, Nicolier is that it has incorporated our own in-house developed guided recovery system, which allows us, instead of just deploying a parachute and landing wherever the wind takes us, to actually steer the system and land it at a location of our choosing. Months of preparation have gone into this moment, but the team won't know if they can proceed until just before the release. The conditions have to be just right. They've conducted drop tests before, but if successful, this will be their first full run through with this technology. Because this is a very high stakes test, so I mean, there's a bunch of things that can go not as planned, so fingers crossed it'll all work out. And now it's out of their hands. Checked three minutes. This does work. <laughs> Go for driver. It takes hours to prepare the Nicolier for the test. We are now assembling all the different subsections of the rocket. This is what we call the recovery fairing which houses all the parachutes, the drogue chute, and up top here is our separation system. A rocket is an unstable vehicle on descent. Using a controlled parachute means it lowers the chances of it breaking or being lost, and ultimately means it can be reused. In theory, we can just fly it right back to us, pick it up, put in a new motor, and then go again. And if it ends up working as we intend to, then it'll be a big step forward for both us as an association and hopefully some of that will like trickle on over into the industry as a whole. The team is part of ARIS, a student-run organization that brings together 200 space enthusiasts to build everything from rocket engines to satellites. For many of these students from ETH Zurich, it's their first time getting hands-on experience. I think it's crucial that students have the possibility to work on projects, to get their hands dirty and really not just sit in a classroom. So these are the guys that are de actually developing the control algorithms for our guided recovery system. When they started a few years ago, it was just a rocketry team and now they have so many different branches. This is the brains, the heart and the muscles sort of in one. And that's about it, the tangent. Innovation is a key driver for this industry. We always need new technologies and the students are at the forefront of uh, driving these new technologies. I have the data from the first drop here. The recovery team uses data from previous drop tests to feed the algorithm. The system slowed down, it becomes green again. The autonomous recovery system allows the parachute to precisely steer the rocket in real time, reacting to external factors like wind. We have wind sensors, we have GPS, we have uh, orientation sensors, so the model really is fed a lot of data in real time and then it tries to make the decision based on that. 
if something doesn't work as expected, then we are at a very high risk of losing our system or crashing it into a mountain or something, which would be not so great. Out in the valley, the helicopter has reached altitude. Let's go. So what you should see is us like doing a very nice sort of like snake line in between the two mountains and then hopefully just landing right in the valley so we can go and pick it up. Sounds easy enough. Yeah, sure. <laughs> the students are watching to see if their system can make multiple turns on its own. Very nice turn. And it's a success. We just had a drop, I mean, and everything seemed to work out pretty nicely. I mean, we landed a bit further back than we would have liked. Beautiful turns. Yeah, two beautiful turns. Yeah. I mean, this is a huge accomplishment, yeah. <laughs> this is a big step forward in their project. As they continue to develop their work, the students are committed to pushing the limits. The type of projects that we do are only limited by what we can come up with. It just gives us incredible opportunities which you do not really have anywhere else. Want to learn more about the Eris team and their sky-high projects? Scan here. <laughs>